Hello everybody, my name's Tank Runner, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Roulettes and World Building. Today, we're going to continue working on our project to create a new Pokemon region. Last episode, we worked on the Pokemon that made up the first gym leader's team, Luskin, the Cone Snail Pokemon, who evolves into Shellisk, and then Sluggernaut, and Varlata, the Goana Pokemon, who evolves into Goanator. In this video, I'll be covering the first of many wild areas in our region and the new Pokemon that can be found there. But I want to kick us off with a few updates and some world building. So if you're not interested in that, and you just want to skip to the part where you get to see all of the adorable monsters, here's a time code for that. For those of you who have been around for a while, you may have noticed a trend when it comes to things people have been asking me to cover in this series. I've gotten a lot of requests to add some regional variants to the roster, but by far the most heavily requested thing has to be an early game bug. bug. Holy f Bug. What? Bug. How did you even get in here? Bug. Where's the bug? All right, cool, so like you guys want a bug, I guess? Today I have three new Pokemon lines, two bugs, one of which is actually a bug type, and to knock out two birds with one stone, two of the three lines are actually regional variants as well. I was a bit iffy on whether or not I wanted to even cover regional variants in my roster. It just felt a little weird to me, but a few of you guys were able to convince me to give it a go. I decided that if I was going to do regional variants, I wanted to pick Pokemon that I felt had designs that weren't that great to begin with, or Pokemon that I don't hear people talking about very often to see if maybe our little community can't give these guys some much needed love and attention. Now, last episode, I told you guys that I wanted our region to be completely open world, and I asked what you thought the best way to handle that was. I got some really good suggestions in the comments, and we bounced around ideas until I think we came to a pretty strong compromise. I didn't want to restrict the player at all when it came to where they could go and when they could go there, but I also didn't want anyone to walk from the first town, buy a quick ball, slowly make their way far from civilization into a dangerous high level area, and catch something that they have absolutely no right having yet. And the only option that I saw that allowed that to happen was to limit the level of Pokemon a player can catch based on how many badges they have at the time. It's not perfect, but it's as close to perfect as I think we're going to be able to get. Thanks to Kyle for starting the thread in the comments. I like the idea that it isn't a rule that you need more badges to own stronger Pokemon, but the badges are an indication of your skills as a trainer, and that people who aren't good enough to defeat gym leaders aren't skilled enough to effectively catch strong Pokemon. So maybe you see a wild Pokemon that's too high a level to catch, and for whatever reason you don't realize it, so you start a battle. The game could tell you immediately that you are in way over your head. You can choose to fight it anyway for a good chunk of experience, or you can choose to run, and the game will give you a higher percentage chance to get away than they do with normal fights. And if the player still doesn't get the hint, when you try and catch it, the game will tell you that you can't find an opening in the battle to throw the Pokeball. Or maybe you're too far away from the target and can't get closer without endangering yourself. There can be a few different ones that the game alternates through, but they all share the same idea. You are not experienced enough to be dealing with these giant monsters that could at any moment quite literally rip you in half. And as you battle more people and earn more badges, you are becoming a better trainer. You are learning how to use your Pokemon effectively and how to safely move yourself throughout the battlefield. I think that's all in a good place for now, so let's move on to our new map. A lot of this is still blank and open to change in the future, but the part that's important to us right now is the eastern coast of the mainland. I've added everything that we've covered in past videos, what we're going to cover today, and what I plan on covering next time. Now, I know this might be a little confusing, so let me explain. The black dots are towns and cities, the blue lines show parts of the map that are semi-linear, like routes, and red lines show wild areas or mark the changing of environments. Our first wild area is this red blob here, which is going to be a sort of badlands. A nice flat plot of land, 
A little sand, a little grass, very few trees, surrounded by rocky formations. This area will give access to some of the Pokemon we've already encountered, along with some new ones. In order from most common to rare, we have Piper, Pinley, and for the first time in the wild, Varlata. And the new designs we have today will plug into these empty slots here. So I had a lot of fun with this first line because I got to learn a lot about the real life animal it's based on, the meat ant. I was researching Australia, so I heard the name and just sort of figured these little f***ers ate people. But apparently their name comes from their specific coloring. Meat ants are super interesting. If you get the chance, there's a few really good documentary style videos on YouTube about them that I would highly recommend. Punchbug, the meat ant Pokemon. Punchbug are very protective of their homes. So it isn't uncommon to see gatherings of punch bug from different colonies fighting to defend their borders. However, they are very civilized in their fighting, choosing to pair up with an opposing punch bug and have individual bouts instead of an all out battle. These bouts never end in either Pokemon being injured and the combatants remain respectful of each other throughout the fight, knowing that someday in the future, they may work together with this rival colony. When I started working on this prompt, I had two things I was worried about. One, bug fighting is a barren wasteland, which is good. I'm trying to use typings that are rarely used or haven't been touched at all, but I have to make sure that my final design stays as far away from Heracross as humanly possible. And two, I personally hate Pokemon designs that get uncomfortably anthropomorphic. So when I started sketching this guy, I kind of had a tiny panic attack, but I think I ended up finding something that was humanoid-ish while still being kind of alien. Jabberant, the evolved form of punch bug. It's rare to see Jabberant in the wild, choosing to stay underground to protect their queen rather than expand her borders. The only time this Pokemon leaves their colony is usually to deal with a dispute at a border that their punch bug underlings can't resolve. When a Jabberant arrives, the two armies rely on one final match to decide who will stay and who will retreat. If the opposing side does not have a Jabberant of their own to fight for them, they will leave the area out of respect for the Elder. All right, my first regional variant. I knew I needed to add a spider to my roster as soon as possible, and when I decided I wanted it to be a regional variant, I immediately knew who needed a makeover. Spinarak. No one ever talks about this poor guy, and I think one look at the design for Spinarak and Ariados will tell you why. Not that they're necessarily bad, but they definitely look like the original artist didn't have a solid idea to start with, making the design sort of bland and forgettable. I hope to improve on that today. Spinarak, the Redback Pokemon. Spinarak are very adept at spinning web, creating anchors to the ground that allow them to catch prey that other spider Pokemon, even Spinarak from the Johto region, wouldn't have access to. When a small Pokemon, like a punch bug, accidentally bumps into one of these tethers, Spinarak will snap them up into the air and into their web. Spinarak bites are very poisonous and can cause severe burning in the surrounding area. If bitten, you should seek immediate medical attention. My thoughts on Ariados are the same as my thoughts on Spinarak, but about four times worse. This thing looks like they tried a bunch of stuff that individually on their best day would barely work, and then they sort of slammed them all together. Not quite the whole everything but the kitchen sink situation, but it's pretty close. Ariados, the evolved form of Spinarak. When dealing with infestations of spider Pokemon, rangers will catch or relocate the Pokemon and then go about dealing with their web. The strands of the web are usually too strong to break up, so rangers are normally forced to burn them away. This does not work on a web made by an Ariados. The Pokemon's silk is flammable, but the flame will never destroy the individual strands allowing Ariados to use its own flames when hunting prey without fear of damaging its home. 
Not much to say about this next one. I had a good idea about where I wanted to take this line, making it evolve into something different depending on its gender. And on top of that, I still wanted it to come across as a baby Pokemon. So because of that, I think the design is pretty simple, but overall pretty solid. I think from a quick glance, you can see how this little fella could turn into either of the two Pokemon we cover after this. Wallabam, the kangaroo Pokemon. Despite their appearance, Wallabam's fists are primarily fur and are not nearly as large as they appear to be, giving much needed padding to the Pokemon's main means of defending itself. Many wild Wallabam will choose intimidation over confrontation, slamming their fists into the ground, causing a deep booming sound and sending a burst of dirt and dust outward from the point of impact. So here's the thing. I told you guys already that two of the lines today are regional variants. With this being a kangaroo, I'm sure you have a pretty good idea of which Pokemon we're about to Pretty Woman. So I have a bone to pick here. Trying to make a regional variant for Kangaskhan was a f***ing ordeal. The problem isn't that I couldn't come up with anything, because I was pretty set on a male-only version of Kangaskhan and a new female Pokemon to pair with it. The problem here is how much of a f***ing enigma Game Freak made the biology of Kangaskhan to begin with. I have so many questions. Does this little thing grow up, or are Kangaskhan cursed to raise and look after a baby until they die? It doesn't count as its own Pokemon, but it's also not a Kangaskhan, because it can disconnect from its mom, roommate, parasitic host? I have no idea. What the hell is this? What's going on with the egg situation? Oh, okay, cool, it's born with a baby, f***ing great. There's just hundreds of newborn babies walking around with the power to destroy land and topple f***ing governments, and no one seems to have a problem with that. This will summarize the chaos that has been my life for the last month or so. Are all of these eggs individual executes? Or are they all together one execute? I used to think the answer was the latter until I picked one up and moved it away from its friends. What the f is this? Galvaru, the evolved form of a female Wallabam. When a Wallabam evolves, it will take the form of a Galvaru or a Kangaskhan, depending on its gender. Galvaru does not have the same size and physical power of its counterpart, so it relies heavily on its muscular legs and tremendous speed to make up the difference. Abandoning its prior evolution's punches and slaps for powerful kicks and electrical bursts to slow and paralyze its opponents. When I started piecing everything together for this Pokemon, I was worried about how it would compare to its female counterpart. It had around the same amount of resistances, but more than double the weaknesses. If you guys have been following my videos, then you know that I try and make all my Pokemon viable, so no one has to miss out on their favorite because it isn't good enough to use. So I went through a list of all the abilities Pokemon can have to try and level the playing field, and I think I've found some good options. Something like Solid Rock or Sheer Force would ensure that this Pokemon can take hits or hit hard to make up for its long list of weaknesses. Kangaskhan, the evolved form of a male Wallabam. In an attempt to learn more about Kangaskhan when they were first discovered, many people rushed to the site. Out of fear of not being able to easily return to capture more, they caught exclusively female Kangaskhan, knowing that was all they needed to guarantee the birth of more Kangaskhan into their care. Because of this, Kangaskhan that evolved from Wallabam are the closest version of the Pokemon to its original form that existed before humans encountered them. However, this Kangaskhan is still quite different from what it should naturally look like, and there's no way to truly know the damage we have caused to this species as a whole due to our interference. Male and female Kangaskhan rarely live in the same area, and have become so different that allowing them to mate has become difficult, and many worry that the Pokemon may continue to change in strange ways in the future as a result. 28 down, 123 to go. What do you guys think of the new additions to the roster? I want to see everyone's updated teams in the comments below. My next upload is going to be something non-Pokemon related to give me some more time to work on the next set of Pokemon designs, but I don't have a topic decided just yet. I know you won't be hearing this until I've already started working on the next video, but do you guys have any ideas for videos that you'd like to see that don't involve Pokemon? I know a lot of you are subscribed to me because of my Pokemon series, but I'd still like to make sure I'm making content that you guys will enjoy. I'm open to any ideas that you guys can come up with as long as they match the general vibe of my other stuff. 
If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you want to take a crack at drawing any of the prompts I've done, or you want to send me some artwork to help flesh out some of my worlds, please send them to me over on my Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys make. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.